Hi class, this is Sir Sly and welcome back to my channel. So I am here again to discuss to you another topic in grade 9 science and this topic is still part of the first grading period. So are you excited to start the discussion? Let's begin! In grade 8, you learn that parents pass on their genes to their offspring through reproduction. The inheritance of these genes, para sa iba't ibang traits, follow the law that were formulated by the father of genetics, uh, who is Gregory Mendel. So, alam naman natin na si Gregory Mendel ay nakilala sa kanyang work sa pea plants, uh, which led him to discover the fundamental laws of inheritance. Now, one of these laws states that the appearance of traits is controlled by two alternative forms of genes called alleles. Sabi ni Mendel, one of these alleles is dominant and that would mask the expression of the other allele, which is recessive. However, um, it was later on discovered na uh, yung inheritance ng ilang mga traits ay hindi nagka-conform or hindi nagpa-follow sa laws na prinopose ni Mendel. So, let me give you two examples. In real life, allele pairs may have a variety of dominance relationships. That is, one allele of the pair may not completely hide the other in the heterozygote. Number two, there are often many different alleles of a gene in a population. So these two real-life examples gave rise to the non-Mendelian patterns of inheritance. Sa mga ganitong klaseng cases, um, yung genotype ng organism or yung kanyang set of alleles still determines the phenotype or the observable features of the offspring. However, a variety of alleles may interact with one another sa iba't ibang paraan to specify the phenotype of the offspring. Now, going back to Mendel, kung iisipin natin, medyo swerte tayo dahil uh, yung genes ng mga pea plants ni Mendel ay hindi nagpakita ng mga ganitong klaseng complexities. Kasi kapag nagkataon, possible na hindi maintindihan ni Mendel yung resulta ng kanyang experimentation. And most likely, um, he wouldn't be able to figure out the core principles ng inheritance, which are the key in allowing us to understand itong mga special cases sa non Mendelian inheritance. So, at this point, for us to understand yung mga nabanggit na complexities kanina, let us talk about the different non-Mendelian patterns of inheritance. So, under non-Mendelian patterns of inheritance, we are going to talk about incomplete dominance, co-dominance, and we are also going to talk about multiple alleles which is also under or a part of the topic uh, co-dominance. So, in this video, we are going to briefly discuss uh, each of these patterns of inheritance. Then, I will give an example para meron kayong guide. And then, I will also give some seat works for you to do at the comfort of your home. Uh, so, pwede nung i-pause yung uh, video kapag dumating na dun sa part na meron ng seat work para pwede nyo gawin sa scratch paper or sa papel. Okay, so let's start with the first non-Mendelian patterns of inheritance, which is incomplete dominance. Okay, so yung resulta ng experimentation ni Mendel ay groundbreaking, partly because uh, kinontra niya yung idea na yung traits ng parent ay uh, permanently blended sa offspring. However, in some cases, the phenotype of a heterozygous organism can actually be a blend between the phenotypes of its homozygous parents. So, we refer to that pattern of inheritance as incomplete dominance. Uh, in an incomplete dominance, the heterozygous genotype produces a phenotype that falls in between the two homozygous phenotypes. Meaning, the heterozygous offspring is an intermediate of the trait of the homozygous parents. So, ang isang magandang example nitong incomplete dominance ay yung uh, kulay ng mga petals ng mga bulukla. So, as you can see in this picture, we have here the parent flowers. We have the red flowered plant and then the white flowered plant. So, kapag pinag-cross mo sila ng dalawa, they will produce an offspring na intermediate sa kulay ng dalawang parent, which is kulay pink. So, for us to understand how this happened, pwede pa rin natin gamitin yung model ni Mendel para matredict yung results 
ng mga alleles na nagpapakita ng incomplete dominance. Kasi, even if they show incomplete dominance, alleles are still inherited according to uh, Mendel's basic rules, which is the law of segregation. So, pwede pa rin natin gamitin dito yung Punnett square. So, in flowers, petal color demonstrates incomplete dominance. A cross between a homozygous white-flowered plant and a homozygous red-flowered plant will produce offspring with pink flowers. For this example, let us predict the genotype and phenotype of the offspring as well as their uh, ratios. Okay, so for example number one, we have a red, red flowered plant that is crossed with a um, white flowered plant. So in this uh, example, if you will notice, we did not use the capital letter R and small letter R to represent the alleles. What we did is that we used the letter of the trait which is color of the petals, letter C, and then nakasuperscript na lang yung uh, first letter nung color ng parents, which is red and white, so letter R and letter W. So again, in uh, doing the Punnett square, magkasamayin lang natin yung mga alleles na magkakatapat. Okay, so for the first box, baba mo lang yung allele for uh, red flower, and then yung allele for white flower. Same goes with the other boxes. So what did you notice? So all boxes resulted to a heterozygous offspring. Kasi yung isa, yung isang, yung isang allele, dun sa period ng allele ay mayroong red, red color and dun yung isa may, may white mag. Again, this will result to an intermediate color. As we all know, kapag pinag-combine natin ng red tsaka ang white, uh, it will form pink. Okay? So, sa ating genotypic ratio, we will have 4 is to 0 kasi apat na heterozygous yung gumabas. 4 is to 0. So, 100% yung probability that we will get a heterozygous genotype. And then, for the phenotype, same then 4 is to 0. And then, yung kanyang probability, 100% pa rin na pink flowers. So, Ganun lang kadali ang incomplete dominance. How about if we uh, cross an another color? Say for example, intermediate to a plain colored flower. Okay, so for example, red homozygous na flower, tapos pink. Again, let's use the Punnett square. So, okay, so again, pag meet nyo lang po or pagsamahin nyo lang yung mga alleles. As you notice, yung first two boxes, yung ang na-produce ng offspring ay uh, homozygous red. And then, sa baba naman, yung third and fourth quadrants ng Punnett square, the cross resulted to the intermediate color which is pink. Okay, so if we are to uh, write the genotypic ratio of this uh, cross, so it will be 2 is to 2. Bakit 2 is to 2? Kasi dalawang red tapos dalawang pink. Sa probability niya, 50% ay homozygous red, 50% heterozygous pink. Same goes with its phenotypic ratio. 2 is to 2 rin yung ratio niya, and then 50% red flowers, and then 50% pink flowers. So, I think two examples are enough for you to do crosses on your own, okay? To predict the, the genotypic and phenotypic uh, ratios of certain crosses. So, I want you now to pause the video and then uh, get a pencil and a paper and then do the following um, crosses. So, yung una, white and pink uh, flowered plant. And then, yung pangalawa, pink and pink flowered plant. Ayan, so I hope na sabutan niyo itong um, two examples natin dito for incomplete dominance. Now, let's move on to uh, the next um, non-Mendelian patterns of inheritance, which is co-dominance. Another non-Mendelian inheritance of trait is a relationship between alleles from parents which are both expressed because neither allele is recessive and both phenotypes are shown. Closely related kay incomplete dominance ay si co-dominance. Yun nga lang, in this uh, non-Mendelian pattern of inheritance, um, hindi nagkakaroon ng blending ng color or blending ng traits. Instead, both alleles are um, simultaneously expressed in the phenotype of the offspring. Okay? Ibig sabihin hindi nagsama yung um, trait, but instead, pareha silang nag-appear or pareha silang lumitaw dun sa appearance ng offspring. Katulad na lamang yung nakikita nyo dito sa picture, ina instead na magsama yung red tsaka yung white para mag-create or mag-form ng pink, ang nangyari, pareha sila nag-appear dito sa petals ng bulaklak. So, merong white, merong red. 
Now, one good example of pole dominance is the rune for in cattle. We have here the parent organism, which are a white cow and a red bull. So, if you will notice, to express the alleles, I used prime na lang. Okay? So, gumamit na ako ng tinatawag natin na prime or kuwit. Okay? So, I used letter R to express the trait is yung fur nga ng cattle. Okay? Tapos, nagalagay ako ng prime sa taas to show that the alleles are for a white cow. And then, yung walang prime, yun naman yung para sa um, red na bull. Okay? So, if you cross a white cow and a red bull, what you will get as a result is yung isang roan cattle or isang roan calf. Okay? So, sa roan calf, since meron siyang allele for the red colored fur at meron din siyang allele para sa white colored na fur, ang nangyari sa, sa kanyang appearance, sa kanyang phenotype ay parehas mong nakita sa balat ng cattle yung kulay pula at saka yung kulay pe. So let's have an example problem. In cows, black coat color and white coat color are co-dominant. Heterozygous offspring will be spotted. What if we cross a black cow and a white cow? So their genotypes will be like this. Okay, so BB without prime is for the black cow. And then B prime, B prime will be the genotype for the white cow. So, gagawin ulit natin, gagamit, gagamit ulit natin yung pan square. Paghihiwalayin lang natin yung alleles uh, for the parent organism. Okay, so, lalagin natin yung isa dito sa taas ng pan square, tapos yung isa naman dito sa gilid ng pan square sa left side. Okay, so again, pag-meet nilang po, pagsamahin nilang yung magkakatapat ng mga alleles. Okay, so we have here B, B prime, and actually all uh, offspring has BB prime um, genotypes. Okay? Anong ibig sabihin niyan? Uh, 100% probability na magkaroon ng offspring na spotted na cow. Okay? So, the genotypic ratio is 4 is to 0. For the phenotypic ratio, again, 4 is to 0 din. Kasi, ang kanyang probability is 100% spotted cow na. Okay? So, ang spotted cow, ganito po yung kulay niya. Merong kulay puti sa balat ng baka at meron din kulay itim. So, um, parehong na-express and simultaneously sabihin sabay na na-express yung black coat color tsaka yung white coat color dun sa balat nung baka. Now, um, I think you can do this one on your own. So again, pause the video and I want you to make a punnet square. Uh, find out uh, the results of a cross between a black cow and a spotted cow. So get a pen and paper and then do it now. Okay, very good. So let's move on to exercise number 3. So this time, I want you to predict the genotype and phenotype of the offspring if you cross a spotted cow to another spotted cow. So I hope you got the correct answers. Now, let's move on to the last um, non-Mendelian pattern of inheritance. Sabi ko kanina sa first part ng video, yung pangatlong um, non-Mendelian pattern of inheritance ay still part pa rin ng co-dominance. Yun nga lang kasi merong special case na nangyari dito. So, yung work ni Mendel suggests that two alleles or a pair of allele existed for each gene. Now, if you will remember, kanina rin sa umpisa ng video, not all alleles behave the same as um, what happened to Mendel's experiment. So, today, we now know that it's not always the case na, na isang pair lang ng allele ang mag exist sa isang gene. Dito papasok ngayon yung multiple alleles. Again, this is part of co-dominance pa din. Now, although individual human can only have two alleles for a given gene, multiple alleles may exist in a population level, and different individuals in the population may have different pairs of these alleles. So, yun ang sinasabi sa multiple alleles. One very good example of multiple alleles is yung ating blood type. Okay? So, in blood typing, the gene for type A and the gene for type B are co-dominant. The gene for type O is recessive. Okay? If you will notice, tatlo yung present dito na alleles. So, multiple alleles nga, sabi, di ba? So, tatlong alleles ang present sa isang gene. Pero si type A at si type B ay co-dominant. Now, the chart below will show to you the phenotype and genotype of each blood type. Okay? Remember, we have four blood types. Um, type A, type B, type AB, and type O. So, those are the phenotypes. If we will uh, examine their genotypes, you will notice that for type A and type B, we have two possible combinations of the alleles to get a phenotype 
for type A and type B. So for type A, you have to have a homozygous A genotype or perhaps a heterozygous A genotype. Uh, sa B, homozygous B or heterozygous B. And then for the last two blood types, blood type AB and blood type O, isang uh, possible combination lang ang pwede mangyari. Sa blood type AB, it is heterozygous AB. And then for blood type O, it is homozygous O. Okay? So, if you will notice, meron tayong ginagamit yung isa pang letter aside from A and B. So, yun yung letter I. So, yung letter I na nandyan stands for isoagglutinogen, which is an antibody that recognize and bind with the antigen of blood type A and B. So, let's have an example of uh, problem here. So, determine the possible blood types of the offspring when, let's have number one um, example verse. Mother is type O and then father is type A. It says there, may open and close parenthesis, na homozygous ni father. It means na dapat yung gamitin mong genotype sa pag-create ng Punnett square ay yung homozygous, hindi yung heterozygous. So, ano ba ang homozygous genotype? ang isang blood type A. That is, both letter I have superscripts of capital letter A. So, yung, ito yung nasa side ng pangit square natin. So, ito si homozygous type A. And then, si mother type O, uh, walang problema dyan kasi isa nga lang yung combination, possible combination for uh, the genotype of blood type O. So, again, let's go pangit square. So, now, we can see that all four offspring has the same phenotype, diba? And genotype, okay? So, the genotypic ratio here will be 4 is to 0. The probability is uh, 100% heterozygous type A, okay? So, do naman sa phenotypic ratio, we have 4 is to 0 pa din. Then, yung kanyang probability is 100% type A blood, okay? And that's for example number 1. Now, um, can you do example number 2 here? So, a mother is type AB and a father is type A but heterozygous. Okay, so what will be the genotype of the offspring? So, pinawa ko na yung genotype ng mother, which is IA, IB. And then yung father, since heterozygous siya, we have your capital IA, and then we have small letter I. Okay, so remember, ang type A at type B, merong dalawang possible combination for their genotypes. Isang homozygous, isang heterozygous. Okay, so pause the video and get a pen and paper, then do this example. Great! So, I think um, you got the correct answers. Let's move on to example number 3. Okay, so in this one, mother is type A, heterozygous, and then father is type B, heterozygous. So again, pause the video and do this example number 3. Okay, very good! So let's have the last one, example number 4. So we have here a mother which is type B homozygous and a father who is type A homozygous. So what will be the genotype of their offspring? Pause the video and do this on your paper. Very good! So I think na master nyo na ang pagpredict ng genotype at phenotype ng mga offsprings sa incomplete dominance, co-dominance, and sa multiple alleles. So, before we end the video, let's have a short review of the non-Mendelian patterns of inheritance. We have the first one, the incomplete dominance, wherein the offspring will have an intermediate phenotype which is a blend between the phenotype of the homozygous parents. And then the second one, co-dominance, wherein the alleles from both parents are expressed simultaneously um, because none of them are recessive. So instead of forming intermediate phenotype, um, both uh, phenotype of the parent will be expressed on the appearance of the offspring. And then the last one, which is under co-dominance, is the multiple alleles. So, in multiple alleles, um, more than two alleles are present in um, the gene. A very good example is our blood type. So, that's it for today's video. I hope may tutunan kayo in our discussion about non-Mendelian patterns of inheritance. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell para maging updated ka sa mga future videos ko. Again, this is Sir Sly. Thank you for watching and always remember not to study hard but to study smart. See you next meeting. Bye class!